course, Wednesday marks 18 years since the attacks on September 11th. Hard to believe. Manning asks, what is the best way to, to continue honoring the memories of those we lost? Well, joining me now is architect Michael Arad, who designed the 9-11 memorial and the memorial glade, which is new. And um, people who are walking through the area of the memorial might be saying, what is that? We have pictures that we can show you right now, because when you see them, you'll say, gee, what does that mean? Because they're slabs, correct? And what would be the meaning of those slabs? Yeah. And if we could take a look at those pictures right now. Well, one of the things that I'm very grateful for is that we're able to open the memorial this year. Um, it is long overdue. And when the memorial, the original design for the 9-11 memorial uh, was selected and built and opened on the 10th anniversary, I don't think we were as cognizant of the need to address this ongoing toll that uh, is with us to this day, 18 years later, and continues to affect so many. So two years ago, we were asked to add to the memorial and address this huge deficiency. And I was so grateful for the opportunity to go back and change the memorial in a way that would find a way of including this group of people that were not part of their initial design. And, and the group, unfortunately, keeps growing. It, describe the symbolism of how you designed this memorial, this glade, as you call it. Well, we had to find a new center of gravity on the plaza for this memorial. It couldn't be right up against the pools. Right. And so we were drawn to the southwest portion of the memorial plaza, where we had an open glade already. And that portion of the plaza is actually where the ramp that served so many of the first responders right. and the recovery workers was located. So it already had a sort of uh, an embedded symbolic meaning. And we wanted to create a new path through there. and. Flanking that path are a series of these enormous stone monoliths that seem to rise up and out of the ground, sort of a forceful resistance to, to the horrors of the site. And these stones are sort of, you know, they're battered and rough, but they're not broken. And they sort of connote a resistance and a strength that I saw in the people that we met with and from the families that we heard from. The memorial is extraordinary, and I've seen many around the country, none quite like this, in part, as we've discussed, that this is a public area, which many tourists are going through, maybe less respectful people. Uh, when you design these, is how did you bridge the sacredness of this place uh, with the idea that it's going to be plenty of places where people are just passing through, eating their burgers and that sort of thing? You know, in a strange way, being here in New York after the attacks of 2001, opened my eyes to how we came together in yeah. places like Union Square, like Washington Square, like at street corners, to support one another. Yeah. And when we needed to, these public spaces gave us the opportunity to stand side by side and support each other. And a place like Washington Square, where a vigil could be held one day, could also be a place that has much, that's much more lively right. another time of the year. But these public spaces, I think, are the, the glue that bind us as a society. And when we needed them, they were there for us. And I thought that provided me with the direction for what we should do at Ground Zero, that we needed to create a public space that was really part of New York City that was stitched into the urban fabric. And as I said, it's extraordinary. Could you please describe those, the, the water, the way you designed it? What was behind your, th what was your thoughts behind that design? Um, in a strange way, I started to think about a memorial in the water shortly after the attack. And it wasn't actually at Ground Zero. It was at the Hudson River, a block further west. And I imagine somehow the surface of the river shorn open, forming two square voids, and the water cascading into these voids, never filling them up, the sense of ongoing absence that time can't erase. And when the competition was announced for the design of the memorial at the site, I thought, could I bring this notion of emptiness and the void that's been left And we're in our looking heart? at it right now. Yeah back to the plaza. And I think when you stand at the edge of that void and you see all those names and you feel this emptiness, um, there's something that connects you to the people and connects you to the past. It's breathtaking uh, in, the, in the smallest ways and the largest ways. And I have to ask you, uh, is this an art? Is this a science? Can you, you don't get educated necessarily, come up with this incredible creativity mm -hmm. and in the same sense, the sacredness that you have to bring to your work. How does that develop in you? I think you have to have a, a sensitivity to hear from others. I mean, you bring something of yourself to the project, but you also need to take in um, from many, many voices what what people are feeling, what they're looking for a memorial to accomplish, and to try and balance those two things, the, all these inputs from outside and how you 
can respond to that as an architect, as a designer. And I know as a person who's been there quite often from the time it first opened till now, my feelings have changed. It's not as raw as it was 10 years, okay. So how do you approach, let's say, the next generation? I know my daughter goes past every day because she works there. She doesn't really remember. Is the memorial something that you have to do to try to draw in future generations? I hope the memorial can testify to visitors at any time in the future something about the magnitude of the events that occurred here, the loss of so many lives. And to me, that focus on the individual names listed around each pool was an effort to do that. We were not able to do that with a memorial glade. That's a very different um, charge. Uh, and there are name. if we were to add names to that list at the memorial glade, we would be adding names for the next few years because the toll from that day, even though we're sitting here 18 years later, is still unfolding. There's no way to really imagine the pain that these people suffer when they go back and they'll go back again tomorrow, but I can tell you there is some consolation with the wonderful work you did with the memorial. Thank you very much. We thank you. Michael Arad, thank you again. Tomorrow we'll have live coverage of the 9-11 commemoration ceremony starting at 825. You can watch it right here on CBSN New York.